and Walter. <laughs> I did say you needed to be there. And you are. Good for you. Good for you. This is a great place, Walter, to get your questions uh, answered. Um, Bruce, welcome. Good. Loud and clear. Excellent. All right. That, thank you, Mike. I, I, uh, I was a bit concerned because um, every time I tried to start the stream earlier, the, uh, uh, I was getting an error message from uh, YouTube. Uh, saying I had to try again in 30 minutes. So that's good. I'm glad it's working. Listen, before before we get started with questions uh, tonight, um, there's a couple of things I just wanted to... I thought if you guys are going to the trouble to show up here on a Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, I ought to tell you something that I'm not telling everybody else, or at least tell you before I tell everybody else. Um, so uh, I've, I've got something rigged up as an experiment so that I can show you uh, another cam with another camera, and you can um, you can tell me if this is the the kind of thing that's any use to you. The focus isn't real good, but here we go. Th this is the 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 um, platform I'm going to use. I'm probably going to do a better job of uh, focusing the camera, but I've been working on the the Wii Macro Rail uh, the last couple of days, building a platform out for it. And uh, I'm trying to come up with something that will use the the vertical mount as well as the as well as the rail. And uh, I've got all kinds of new gadgets that I've been working on. Like uh, I found these things at the uh, plumber's shop the other day, and uh, yeah, they're fantastic. They hold one of these metal tubes that come out of a printer, and that's a great stand to put your lights on. So been working on that. What else have I been working on? Building an adapter for my microscope. You know, I told you that I had the adapter, but I didn't have a, a tube so that, uh, uh, so that I could actually film what I'm doing. Uh, well, I'd made one yesterday. Uh, it's made of wood, which I don't think the Leica people would like very much, but it actually works very well. So I just got to figure out a way to attach the camera to it and we'll be in uh, business. Everything good that I said preliminarily about the TT350 is on hold for right now. Um, run into problems with the first TT350 already, not even a week, a week in. Uh, very, very short battery time. I have absolutely no idea what it is that's going on with it. But um, yes, uh, one other thing I want to show you, something I found at a, a, at a thrift shop and it immediately gave me an idea because a lot of you try to shoot highly reflective things, insects, jewelry, things like that. Have you ever seen one of these before? It's what my, it's what my mother used to make me wear so I wouldn't bite the neighborhood children. It's a bite, anti-biting collar for dogs. But if you paint the inside of this thing white or line it with white paper, it makes an absolutely perfect shooting pyramid for reflectionless, reflective things. I used to have one that uh, was in worse shape than that one, so I know it'll work. If you ever see one of those at the thrift shop, buy it. It, it, will, uh, it will do you good. All right, now, uh, that was all the rambling I had to do. No, there was one other thing, one other thing. So another thrift shop thing. Let me see if I can show this to you. See this? This is a thing that, that um, shooters use when they're out shooting. It's a stick. It's actually two sticks that uh, you shake them and they go straight because they've got rubber in them, elastic. And it was all broken, but I fixed it. And they, and they do that. And it occurred to me that that thing fits in my back pocket and it makes a great stand. Somebody asked me last week if I use a tripod or a monopod out in the woods. I don't, but I'm probably going to use one of these sticks from now on because it's got a little rubber thing at the top, a little nubbin that you can rest your camera on. Not a bad idea for 50 cents. All right, I'm through uh, yakking. They were just think, no, no, there was one other thing. You might have heard, if, if you saw the video I did, the first video on the, the Wii Macro, I talked about this thing. This is a good thing. This is not a good thing. This is the, the slider that they, uh, that they sent me. Uh, 
and it was my first macro rail. And I said that it wasn't really any good and that I wasn't going to use it. But I found my old one and I discovered that if you saw it into pieces and then reattach it together, you can make a big, long, slidey rail out of it. So that's what I've done. I've, I've made a big, uh, long stand that's going to go on the platform and hold everything else without having to buy anything. So that really was everything. That is everything I had for you. Uh, so questions. Let's see. Uh, Alan, my voice conflicts with the voices in your head. <laughs> well, I was going to say the same thing about you. Or my head, that is. Stephen, welcome from New Jersey. Great. I'm glad the, uh, the, the second camera is working. I'll get more creative with it when, um, when I'm convinced that the, the signal is going to stay good. I checked the speed of the internet right before I started uh, and it was, the upload speed was 20 uh, uh, megabytes per second. I'm getting 2600, which is about 10% of that, which is about right. That's a, <laughs> about 10 to 20% is what you actually get of the, of the speed, but that seems to be uh, enough. Good. Um, I'm going to start answering questions that nobody has asked here in a second. Uh, do you know that um, that this is the the purpose of our get-togethers is to is for me to answer your questions? But I was trying to explain at, at one o'clock in the morning, writing a post to Patreon that uh, it's more than just that. It's also anything you want to talk about. I mean, anything that you think would work in a one-way conversation where I talk, then uh, yeah, we can do it. Uh, you just saw an AC battery replacement on Amazon. An, oh, a AA battery replacement. What, what is that, Alan? A replacement battery for... I don't know. I feel like I walked in on a conversation that was already going on. Will moving from continuous to flash improve sharpness? Yes. Most of the time. Unless you are very, very good at long exposure photography and you're in a completely vibrationless environment otherwise yeah flash will help would i please recommend a specific brand of super glue for mounting insect yes i will um well no i won't actually because i can't find it um it's uh, over on the shelf over there um hold on a second It's too far away for me to read the label. I'll tell you what I'll do. Chat amongst yourselves. I'm going to find it. Just a moment. It's a very popular brand, and somebody's or probably already uh, put it in the, in the chat there because I've recommended it many times. Uh, they make... Um, many different flavors of the stuff. Yeah, it's um, the name of the company is not on this list. <laughs> uh, it's um, it's a guy's name. Does anybody know? Has anybody written it down yet? Rick Garrison is here from Southern Indiana. Welcome, Rick. Oh, it's it's normally the first one that's listed as the as the as the best one when you look at it in the woodworking magazines and what have you. But I'm not seeing it. I use Gorilla and I use J and B, uh, but the best one is the one that I'm about to find. 
You didn't think you'd get to watch me looking at the computer tonight, did you? It's not on here. I, I'm sorry. I'll have to wait till it comes into my head. But it comes in big bottles. Woodworkers use it. They make an accelerant for it, which comes in a brown spray bottle. Uh, you don't use the accelerant with insects. It'll set fire to them. But uh, yeah, it's very, uh, very, very good. They make it in, I think, about five different thicknesses from a gel to something about as runny as water. And I go with the second runniest one. It's very thin, but it allows you to use very, very little. And that is the key. That is the number one most important thing in pinning an insect with glue is to use about 10% of as much as you think you need. Uh, because your tendency is, is to put more than you think you need and it's always a mistake. It'll just get wet. It won't, it won't set. What you want is so dry that when you touch the pin on the insect, it's attached. Let me see. What? Oh, ooh, lots of questions have come in. Okay. So that was a long uh, non-answer, Walter. What is the best way to preserve mountain shoot spiders and similar subjects? Well, presumably, Alan, you're, you're uh, you're talking about uh, arachnids and other uh, arthropods that are not insects. The whole deal is different with soft-bodied creatures, and you're either going to have to shoot them fresh, which is dangerous because they never seem to die when they're fresh. I mean, uh, they'll appear to be dead, and you'll stick a pin in them and start photographing them, and then they just get off the pin and leave. Um, so uh, you do have to kill them, but once you kill them, they start to, to decompose almost immediately. They get really uh, flaccid, and um, I once tried freezing them, um, and that just liquefies them completely, so when you stick a pin in them, they just pop. Uh, what I do with spiders, that are, I found a, a black widow the other day. Um, in fact, I've found two in the last month. And uh, I caught one of them and, and brought it home to photograph. And what I did was I put it uh, in alcohol, uh, in uh, ethanol, 95% ethanol. And I'm going to leave it there for a week. Now, it's, it's definitely dulled down the, uh, uh, the hourglass, but it's also firmed the, the thing up and it's not going to sag or fall apart. So that's what I would recommend. I would avoid freezers. I would avoid doing anything fresh unless you're sure the thing's dead. Um, all right. Where are we? Who's using a dummy battery? I use a dummy battery. I use dummy batteries now in all of my video cameras and um, when I'm shooting macro. So basically, my and my microscope. So all of my cameras have have uh, Gonine brand, G O N I N E, and I have been extremely happy with them. Uh, I've heard lots of horror stories about them, but I've been very happy with these. Um, let me see, Jim, how are you doing? Uh, why use tone splitting in Lightroom rather than HSL color? Um, it, well, I use both. It, it completely depends on what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, in Lightroom. My, my editing workflow is, uh, is somewhat dependent on the subject, uh, but it's also dependent on the end result that I want to get. There are some things that are easier to do, um, in, um, uh, hue and saturation other things that are easier to do in the basic panel. And there are some things I can't do at all in, in Lightroom and I have to take into Photoshop. It I'm doing one right now. Um, I, I don't think, no, I can't screen share on this, but I'm photographing a bee. It's a, it's a, a very special bee, a very small bee. And um, it's lovely, absolutely lovely, but it's a terrible color to photograph. And uh, yeah, I've had a, a fit with it today, uh, trying to, to use several different methods in Lightroom and ended up going into Photoshop. So uh, it really depends how much flexibility I want. If I need to separate the thing onto layers so that I can work like I did with this bee, 
work on different layers with different parts of the bee and then combine it all, then obviously I, ne I need to be in Photoshop. Uh, but uh, I, I go for the quickest and the easiest most of the time. Uh, if there's a quicker way to do it, that's what I'll do. Hey, Joe, glad you made it. Carl, speaking of batteries, I mean, that's what you wrote. That's not what I said. Uh, when you do focus stacking capture, do you use the camera battery or... Yes, I covered that one already. Yes, I do use an AC adapter. I'd show you one, but they're all in the cameras right now. Gonin, that's the name. G-O-N-I-N. Hey, Arlen. 10 miles east. Is it 10 miles? It's not that far, is it? It's, it's half that, surely. Using reverse Nikon in larger lens on a PB6 Bellows, best micron step length? Well, it depends entirely on how much extension you have. The, uh, the enlarger lens, I'm assuming you have a 50 millimeter enlarger lens. Of course, if it's uh, shorter than that, uh, then you're going to get a lot more magnification and you'll need shorter steps. But if you're shooting with a 50 and you're shooting at the minimum, uh, the minimum extension of the, of the bellows, that's for about 50 millimeters, you're already at one and a half times. Uh, so you probably should be shooting about uh, 700, 800 microns. Um, there's, uh, there, you would never need 20 microns. I mean, uh, e even if you were to max out the bellows at 200, you'd have, you'd be about four and a half times magnification. Um, yeah, I, I, I would never use much more than about, uh, much shorter steps than about 50 or 60. And that's conservative. Uh, I recommend um, you um, uh, get a hold of a, a step length calculator. Uh, I never used to use them. I, well, honestly, I still don't use them. But I did look at one, and I, what I did was I calculated the step lengths for all of my typical lens setups and magnifications. And I wrote them on a sticky note and stuck it in the studio. Just to remind me, if I was thinking, is this enough or is this too much? I've got these 10 numbers written down, you know. So if it's a Nikon 10X, I, I know that that's about 14 step, uh, 14 microns is about right, if I'm using it at full magnification. But with something like the enlarger lens, it depends. Uh, the beauty of the enlarger lens and the reason it's my go-to lens, it's my favorite and, and most often used lens, is because once it's on the bellows, I can extend and shorten the bellows at will to get exactly the framing that I want without having to worry about relay lenses and, and tube lengths and that type of thing. And of course, what you have to remember is when you compress the thing down from 200 millimeters, you also need to stretch your steps out. And that's why I wrote that little cheat sheet, but uh, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic lens and it's so sharp. I hope you've got the, um, the N version of it though, the 50 uh, F2.8N um, EL Nikkor. All right, great. Hope that answered the question. What are the major causes of vibrations? Jim Higgins, hey, how are you doing, Jim? There's, um, th there are uh, innumerable causes of vibration uh, from your heartbeat to your mirror mechanism if, in your camera, if you have one, to the washing machine, to the truck outside on the street. Uh, there are uh, probably 15 motors in most homes that are you know, uh, up to three phase powerful motors in washing machines and dryers. When any of those things are on, in a structure that's connected to where you are with your camera, unless you're on a block of concrete, uh, it's going to vibrate and uh, vibration is of course um, a, a factor of magnification the more magnified you are the more crucial the tiniest vibrations become um, there are there are there are two different types of vibration uh, that, that you need to uh, address the kind that comes from your interventions when you bump into stuff or you thump around in, in, in the studio while you're taking a, a shot, 
that's the easiest one to fix. That just takes discipline. You need to, I have a, I have a routine when I start the stack and I look at the first two pictures to make sure they're not in focus. Then uh, the third thing I do is I go to the areas of the house that are not in the red zone, places I can't walk because they'll vibrate my studio and stay away from them. And actually, I just sit down and be still and I don't do the laundry or do anything else. The other kind of vibrations are much harder and they're the, the ones you don't even notice because they're going on all the time. They're the electric motor in your uh, ice maker and, uh, and in the fridge. You just need to track them down. If you're seeing softness that you can't otherwise explain, there's a very good chance it is vibration. And uh, as we talked about in a recent video, just going with flash and a, and a 20 thousandths uh, 20 thousandth of a second effective shutter speed isn't going to get rid of all vibration artifact. Uh, because if you've got something vibrating, it doesn't matter how quick your flash is. If it's in two different places on subsequent shots, it's going to result in a stacking issue for the for the program, and it'll it'll look as if it was vibrating with with motion blur. Uh, Bob Smith, well done. That is correct. Michael Cam forgot it. Bob Smith, one hundred three Instacure two ounce super thing glue, is what I'm talking about. Mike, you win the prize this week, which is a bottle of Bob Smith 103 Instacure. Jeff, do you insert the pin with super glue into the insect or just glue it to the exterior? It depends. Most of the time, because my, my special interest is the smallest of the small insects, I am usually using a, a 4.0 pin, which is about hair sized, with the last half of a millimeter bent at about 45 degrees, which my fingers won't do, but it's 45 degrees bent. And then I put glue on the top surface and touch it on the underside of the abdomen, on the side of the abdomen of the insect. There isn't enough insect to stick a pin in. Even these little pins are would would destroy the insect so i have that's what i started doing years ago but i've carried that over even to big insects now every now and again i'll have an insect with a very uh, hard thorax and when you get the pin in the thing will rotate and i hate that because if you get a good pose and they start to drift on you uh, so I will, for large insects that I'm going to pin, if I think they're going to rotate, I will coat the pin in a little, little bit of super glue. Uh, but I cannot uh, uh, emphasize too much the importance of using a minuscule amount of glue, less than you think you need. And um, yeah, it's uh, the I, I shot. An insect, uh, an insect that involved two pins last night. I don't want to tell you any more about it because it's a, a photograph I'm going to be using in something here soon. But um, yeah, it was two insects. I just ruined the whole surprise because I said that. But I had two insects and I was able to pin them both with the pin and not have to glue them at all. That's the ideal if, you, uh, if you're going to use a pin, you want to be able to push them off the pin back into the alcohol. It's very hard to preserve them well when they have a pin glued into them. Uh, but with small stuff, you don't have an option. All right, that was a complicated answer. Hey, Robbie. Hey, <laughs> Robbie, you're back. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, uh, what brand? The brand of tweezers I use doesn't have a name uh, because they are so cheap and rubbish and I don't have a pair yeah I do I've got one pair two pairs and I've actually got the size that I use here these are the ones I use and they're called ESD 11 is the is the size they're from China um, I, I will put the a link in the show notes I get them through um, Amazon I think it's Amazon or eBay. They cost about um, maybe $10 for a set of 20 of them. And they are just rubbishy. Uh, cheap, cheap, soft steel. 
but with a little bit of sandpaper which I keep at the insect station you can put a point on these that is absolutely like a, a needle and for the tiny insects that I work with anything bigger than this is too big um, and it has to have a very very easy squeeze like no tension to close it and I've got about six pairs of these that I sharpen every day and and blunt every day just by touching insects with them but I love them I love them to death it's the number 11 is the is the best one because it's long skinny and and weak sprung if you buy some and you get one that's really tight and you you have to press to press the points together take a rubber band and wrap it around at the handle and roll it up as far as you need to until the points are close together like that and then it will get soft again so that's what i do anyway if i get bad ones but no no brand name i'm afraid oh but i buy them don't i so they must have a brand, a brand name i'll go to my uh, amazon account while chat amongst yourselves again it's it'll be in my orders but it'll be from about five years ago let me see um i'll read the next question and then i will scan for the uh tweezers all right uh where were we oh i just uh did something to the questions there you go um you having a problem with the tip spending yes but that's because you probably got i think you probably got um uh, the the right tweezers if your tips are bending it's uh, it's often time well the most common cause of bending them is dropping them on the floor because they'll the, when you sharpen them like this they'll just bend in an instant but when you sharpen them like like this you're going to be so careful with them because they'll stab you uh, so easily that they tend to to keep the points longer it works it really does and, and it's good to have you back robbie it really is uh i saw a youtube video where the macro photographer used the Canon 200 millimeter lens. Well, that's not a good start, is it? <laughs> that had an attachment for a 10 times objective. The attachment looks like a lens cap, but you can screw an objective on it. Uh, am I familiar with that? Yes, I am. I, I, have, I have the same, the very same. Let me see if this is what you're talking about. The, uh, it's just, it's just a, uh, a step, it's a step down ring that goes, in my case, all the way from 77, which is my uh, 70 to 200 lens filter size, that's that piece, goes down to 55, and then there's a 55 to 25, which is the Nikon 10X objective that, um, uh, that I use it with. So yeah, this screws onto my 70 uh, to 200 and then the objective screws into that. And from a distance, that would look like a lens cap, I think you would agree. And they do make them without the two pieces. They make them in one piece, 77 to 25. In fact, I saw them today on the Wii Macro website. I was over there buying some stuff and uh, uh, they, they actually now have them. They have them for all the common thread sizes of microscope objectives, uh, uh, infinity corrected objectives that is. They don't have, I don't think they have an RMS version, but they have, uh, let me see, 26 for, um, for uh, Mitu Toyo, 25 for Nikon. And um, yeah, they did have RMS was the third one. So yeah, and they're, they're the best bargain you'll ever find they're like four dollars and 45 cents it's a maybe the only thing that's gone down in price this year uh, but that that really is a good price and remember if you didn't see my if you didn't see my video on on we macro um they now have a um a, a warehouse in california uh which is in america and uh, so if you live in America and you order something from uh, from uh, Wee Macro, it will take less than a month to get to you. And it might get to you, unlike previously when, yeah, orders from China are risky. So um, when I uh, 
I spoke to to uh, William one day, and uh, two days after that, the um, uh, the package arrived from We Macro. Big big package too, all the way from California in two days. Did that answer your question, Popeye, um, about the lens cap? That I think that's what you were talking about. Um, Alan, you use Everclear. I do too. Oh, for preserving spiders. Yes, does work great. Does work great in the fridge. Um, that that stuff's the best preservative of all. I just I don't use it for all of my insects though, because um, I've got a lot of insects and that would be a lot of booze. Uh, and it's getting expensive uh, down here to buy a bottle of that. Uh, so uh, I save it for special occasions, bugs I catch at Christmas and things like that, or really nice ones like the ones I caught yesterday. Uh, Bob Smith is the name of the glue Phantom F4 Echo, but um, Mike already got it. Mike uh, uh, Camphor already uh, gave us the name. Uh, so you're you're right, which makes you smart, but very late on that one. You didn't cheat, did you? You didn't actually look at Mike's answer. No, you wouldn't do that. What are your favorite in larger lenses? Well, the the lens that never leaves my uh, uh, my bellows basically is the um, El Nikkor. 50 millimeter f 2.8 n i have the um the same lens i 